podcast. Welcome to another episode of Over Ass. Today we have Mr. James Harris on the pod. He's a fellow agency uh, friend and uh, former star of Million Dollar Listing. James, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. That's the first time I've been on a podcast and heard former. And my God, that feels good. So thank you for, yes. for, for highlighting that. Of course. I'm, I'm on it, James. You know, we researched. I was in bed last night researching you till 4 a.m. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. No, I didn't really want to ask was, what you found. I, just, <laughs> I was just watching videos of you all night. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, we, we actually watched the uh, the last 10 seasons of Million Dollar Listing just to get every <laughs> mannerism of you. On, on 2x speed. <laughs> Excellent. Thank God. You should have had it on 5x speed, and then hopefully you would have maybe stayed awake. Yeah. Thank you very exactly. much. Good to be here, boys. Good yeah. to be here. Thanks so much. So James, we want to, we want to get right into it here. You are, I mean, you've obviously blown up. Everyone kind of knows who you are. You're a top agent out in LA. How, how did this all start? How did you get to LA and how did you get into real estate? Good question, man. It all started, well, firstly started in London at age 16, having been thrown out of nine schools uh, oh and, you know, just a complete mess, but always had a passion for selling. You know, I just always had a passion for selling. And I got my first real estate gig at age 16 as a as a junior, as an assistant, running coffees left and right and putting the mail through the machine and basically doing whatever it was that I had to do. Um, and I kind of worked my way up age 16. I did two years in residential, learned the business. Then I moved into the commercial division at the same company, did another two and a half years there. And then when 21 hit, you know, I hadn't done all the regular things 21 year olds did growing up in London, which was take a gap year, travel the world, experience what life has to offer. And I sat my boss down at uh, age 21 at a restaurant on the high street near my office and said, hey, I want to travel for three months. I'm going to go to L.A. Um, and I promise I'll be back. And he promised that he'd pay me the whole time I was gone. And I promised I'd be back. And I came to L.A., and this was kind of during the recession. Um, you know, real estate wasn't booming at that time. And one week of being in LA, I got offered a job trading commodities, ended up not going back to London, fell in love with LA, traded commodities for five or six years. And as soon as the economy kind of came back in its present form, I set up my business with David, which is Bond Street Partners now 10 years ago, um, and have never really look back it's been a wild journey we started from when i tell you the bottom i mean below the bottom we didn't know anyone we didn't have a contact in our phone book we didn't know our way from beverly hills to bel-air um and it was a grind man and you know what i wouldn't have changed anything for the world i think it was the best way we could have done it you know we want to get into that grind but you did say something that you glossed over kind of quickly. Nine schools you got kicked out of by the age of 16. What the hell was going on there? Yeah, You're a good seller. Were you selling drugs or something? What was going on? That was for one school. Okay, of course. <laughs> um, yes. You know, and I always got asked to leave, which means they kicked me out and my mother would just plead with them to let me get pulled out before they expelled me. No, I, I you know, it's a, it's a really interesting topic. When I look back on it, um, that's insane. You know, being kicked out of nine schools is not normal. I didn't live a normal childhood. I definitely had behavioral issues. I had extreme ADHD. Um, I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't focus. I'd distract the class. I was naughty. I misbehaved. But more than anything, I got caught for absolutely everything I did. Um, so, you know, 10 friends could do something. I was the 10th friend. I would get caught. And it really wasn't fun. Um, but I always knew one thing through all the madness that I went through as a child, that I was driven, I wanted to make money, and I wanted to find out what my why was. Um, and it took me till I was 16 in my first job to figure out, okay, I want to be successful. I want to make a name for myself. I want to have a career. Uh, I want to have security. Um, and I'm getting goosebumps even saying that, you know, when I, when I set out at 16, didn't matter what I was told to do. I was just grateful to be there. Um, and, you know, I, it, school just wasn't for me. Working, making money and building a career for myself really was. Yeah. I, uh, 
I got kicked out of one school, James. So pathetic, dude. Come yeah, on. <laughs> well, can't you tell by my leather jacket? I'm a badass. What did you get thrown uh, out for, Matt? Um, I had to sign a contract. I didn't follow everything on the contract. Oh, um, just weak. just little things. I climbed out of a window during class. Like just stupid. It was never malicious or anything just like to that. Just to escape. Just to escape the yeah, class. Yeah, just to escape. escape and get the hell out That's of there. But, <laughs> but let's but, get but, into but it, but it is an interesting subject because you have to think about how many youngsters are out there today that feel lost feel confused can't keep up at school don't fit in um you know they're not academically smart and they're kind of sitting there thinking to themselves what's next for me you know when you're at that age and you're at school and all your friends are passing their exams and they're breezing through their schoolwork and they're sitting there kind of like fuck where am i going to be um it's important for them to know you're going to be okay. You really just have to figure out what motivates you, what gets you up every day, what gets you excited. And that will come with time. Yeah. It's important for people to know it's not a one size fits all. Absolutely. Like school isn't just because you're not great at school doesn't mean you can't be successful. And I think people are finally starting to realize that yep. because for so long, it's a one size kind of fits all um, thing, but let's get into the, the grinding here because you, I mean, this is, I mean, so many people actually start at way more of an advantage than you have. And to see what you've built with literally, like you said, you didn't even have a contact in your phone. So you get your, your real estate license, you're in LA, you don't know anyone. What are you doing th those first couple of weeks? Oh, so it was, it was nuts. I mean, when we set up our business effectively, Bond Street Partners, Dave and I knew we wanted to really go after the high end. So the first thing we did back then was we took all of our savings. We hired a website company and we built this beautiful website. Um, once the website was built, we realized, holy shit, we don't have any real estate to put on the website. This doesn't really make sense. We had this website that made us look like a brokerage, but we were missing the, the real estate portion. Um, and so we really had to get very creative with what we would do. Um, and how we would do it. And we learned very early on that door knocking was the key to many of these agents' big success. It cost zero dollars to do. It took time. It took energy. It took effort. But if you did it over and over and over again, you'd gain results. We also knew that sitting open houses was wildly successful. So we literally got to know every single agent in town and made sure they knew that we were willing to sit any open house. We'd even sit someone's brokers open. We didn't, now we look back at it, know why we ever did that, but we did it because we build relationships with agents. As far as door knocking is concerned, David and I were relentless. You know, we'd call our title rep we'd get, say, the Hollywood Hills, we'd get every single address in the Hollywood Hills, we'd get in his car, we'd go to the top of a street, we'd rock, paper, scissors for who was going to get out of the car, whilst the other one sat in the car and listened to hip hop and laughed at the other one. We made a fun situation out of something that couldn't maybe have been seen as fun. And we would door knock for 10, 11, 12 hours a day. We wouldn't stop and go home in a single day until we had something promising out of that day. Um, and we did that for probably two years, you know, just nonstop, nonstop. And I remember I'd come home, my second daughter was born, my wife would be like, you know, what happened? Did you get anything? And it was always yes, because the glass had to always be half full, not half empty. Um, and I think if you set the mentality that you're gonna be positive and no matter what, leave with a positive result, positive things will come. You have to manifest that positivity. And Dave and I did that and did that. And then we didn't care who we door knocked. I almost feel like the less you know, the better it is. We door knocked Leonardo DiCaprio's house, Dr. Dre's house, every major producer that lives in Bel Air's house. We didn't care as long as we came home with results. And we just closed on a house two weeks ago for $37 million that initially sold as a door knock for six and a half million. So it's proven it works. Don't give up and you'll be blown away by the results. What was the strategy behind leaving one of you in the car? Why not just walk up there together? Because it was fun. We get to okay. laugh, take funny videos. Um, we made fun of this whole situation, man. We never, ever, we didn't care, by the way, if it was raining, cold, boiling hot. Um, but we always knew, and by the way, there were certain homes, um, big ones that we'd both get out of the car and then we'd rock paper scissors for who actually knocked on the door. We just, the situation was we'd make fun out of it. We'd have a fun time doing it. 
um, instead of dreading it or or hating it, we'd have fun doing it. And I think that's the key here. I used to door knock Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, too. I worked yeah. at Hilton and Highland with David Kramer for a little bit and then Alfonso and Bjorn. And, and John, you worked same office as Altman Brothers. Yeah, I was in their same office. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, next door to them. Right. I wasn't working for them. No. But <laughs> I, I'm sure they I wouldn't was, want you. Yeah, go. No, no, they did want me, actually. Okay. They saw cool. me in the office every no day. No problem. So <laughs> I did this door knocking, but I would always walk up there with my partner. And it was awful going up there with him. First of all, he had an Australian accent. accent so I looked like a moron next to him. <laughs> yeah. But I felt like I was just standing there not saying anything. So I think your strategy of going up, you know, one person at a time and kind of making it like a game-like atmosphere was very effective because if you go two people and the other person isn't showing the seller's kind of looking over like well who's this guy is this guy yes. your bodyguard Do you guys like a hockey team what's going yeah. on exactly but 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 guys there was always like right how do i separate myself from everybody else right if 10 people are door knocking one house in in a week how how am i going to stand out and we started door knocking at the time development deals were selling for big big numbers and we also realized early on that developers didn't care who they worked with as long as the agent brought them the deal so we focused on teardowns and our pitch stayed the same our energy levels remained the same and we were always excited and i think you always have to go in with that level of excitement when you're door knocking because the other people may not have it and you have to have your pitch ready and our pitch was very simple and that was that our client didn't care about the locate uh, sorry the how the client didn't care about the condition of the house they really were driven by the house's location would you be interested in selling and nine times out of ten it's no but when you push and push to get a number there's always a number right if the house is worth 10 million tell me it's 20 just give me that crazy number get the number out of that person engage in the conversation the more you engage the more repertoire you have with that person the more you get to know them and again it's consistency go back keep notes just follow up it's all about the follow-up and the execution and i'm telling you to the new agent listening to this if you door knock if you do it consistently if you just set three, four, five days a week, give yourself a time frame, go back, keep doing it, keep doing it, you will get results. Guaranteed. How are you handling objections at this point? Because you don't have a track record of sales in the area, anything like that. So we would team up with agents that did have a track record. Um, and that agent didn't even necessarily know we were teaming up with them. <laughs> they would find out after the fact, guess what? I got a great lead in Bel Air. It's a 30,000 square foot lot. It's six and a half million. Do you want to be involved? No, obviously, yes. Um, so we would use our excitement, our energy, our passion. By the way, you talk the talk, you walk the walk, you learn your market, you know it inside out, back to front. Information and knowledge is key in this business. Most people aren't even bothered. If they're buying you and you show them you have that excitement and you know what the fuck's going on, they want to work with you. Energy is contagious. And if they didn't or we needed to have a track record, we'd bring in a Santiago or a Mauricio. You know, that's what we did very early on. And by the way, we'll still do that today if necessary. We believe that teaming up with someone and getting half of something is a lot better than all of nothing. Um, yeah. and, and we did that very early on. We'd often team up with uh, successful agents and people with track records. We even cut a deal with Santiago very early on in our business. We said to Santi, let us take all of your inventory that you've sold in the last 18 years, put it on our website. And for one area of LA, which was the Hollywood Hills, if we do any deals there from door knocking because of having your inventory on our site, we'll cut you in on a third of the fee. And he said, sure. And suddenly we had 18 years of track record. That's right? actually genius. It, it, is. It, that is. it was what we had to do at the time, you know, and as the times change, you change with them, right? And so yeah. it, we did whatever we had to do to get business and put it in the bank and, and make shit happen. And as we were doing this, we were learning. As we were learning, we were meeting people. As we were meeting people, we were learning just the way other agents were doing things. And one thing leads to another that leads to another, and uh, the rest is history. Matt, I'm stopping the podcast. Okay. Guess what I was doing today? What? scrolling through real estate Facebook groups to get content. But instead of content, I got something else. You know what that was? No. The same question over and over again. What is the best real estate CRM? <laughs> yes. 
This is the most frequently asked question in real estate agent history, Eric. Don't you know that? No, no chance. Well, I'm going to let you know a little secret here. So come close. All right. The people have spoken. And the answer is unequivocally Boomtown. Boomtown is the number one user rated real estate CRM with all of the tools and tech you need to generate and convert conversation ready leads. To check out Boomtown and see how you can score $750 in free digital advertising, visit boomtownroy.com slash over ask. Now that's boomtownroy.com slash over ask. Well, Speaking James, of... I, 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 sorry, Eric, I might have to, I might have to tag you in on some of my listing appointments. You, yeah. you want to fly down to Toronto sometimes? Maybe Let's we can... go. Okay. Double team. I'm all right. Good to know. <laughs> uh, speaking of the times changing, do you think door knocking is still effective today and that sellers are still receptive to it, especially in a post COVID environment, people going up to their doors? 1000% yes, I do. I think in the height of COVID, of course, if some random stranger knocked on your door, you'd shit your pants and tell them where to go. Look, today, I think it's back to how it was. I mean, look, certain people are going to be forever changed from COVID. And, you know, that's very sad. But I think as agents, don't let COVID be an excuse to stop you from door knocking. If you don't go out and door knock, you'll never know. As agents, we love to make excuses um, of why we shouldn't do something or why we can't do it or why we're not good enough to do it. Just get out there and do it. You know, and you're still doing this today. I do when I can. In fact, I just did it last week. I went right wow. onto a development site of a house in Bel Air that's 15,000 square feet, 45 million bucks. I knew someone that I thought would buy it, walked in, met the superintendent. The superintendent connected me to the seller. The seller said, you can show it. I had a buyer. I took them there. It wasn't for them. But now I'm in contact with the seller. And now the seller knows we do a shitload of business in Bel Air. And yeah, absolutely. If I have the time or David has the time, we will absolutely hit the pavement and go door knocking. So everyone listening, if James and David still have the time to door knock, I think you motherfuckers do too. (laughs) Find the time if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Finding the time. You know, I was taught early on and it's, it's not even a good expression, but it works for me. It's like winners find a way, losers make excuses. And I don't want to call anyone a loser, but for (laughs) me, it works. The second I'm making an excuse about something that triggers in my mind, I'm like, James, stop making excuses, you know, get out there, get in front of it, deal with it, go do it. And as soon as I have a fear, I jump in front of it because the longer I don't attack that fear, the bigger that fear becomes. The quicker I get in front of it, I've already got over it. And it's big in our business because so many us, so many agents out there, they're comfortable doing a $1 million deal. For some fucked up reason, they're uncomfortable doing a $10 million deal. And the truth is the only thing that changes is your paycheck's 10 times bigger. Um, but people are scared and they feel like they're not equivalent to those people. That's bullshit. You are absolutely equivalent. And the truth of the matter is closing a $10 million deal in many ways is easier than closing the $1 million deal because the $10 million guy, family, whatever it is, they've sold and bought 15 houses. The $1 million deal could be their first time, might not be, who knows, but just go for the big numbers and don't be afraid. It's so true. You get the $300,000 listings or the lease clients that end up taking nine months of your life away. But the people that have sold a bunch of real estate, they sign everything immediately. They've done it before. Exactly. You know, in my experience of doing thousands of deals too, Matt. And nine months takes 10 years off your life, by the way. And nine months will will take 10 years off anyone's life in this business. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's uh, let's pivot here. You had a, a great run on Million Dollar Listing. Um, and now you like we said at the beginning, former star of million dollar listing. You said it felt good. What was uh your thought process behind that decision? Eight years, a hundred episodes, eleven months a year to film, a wife, two children, a real estate business. It's a lot. And I'm forever grateful for the show. The show, the franchise, the production, everyone behind it. I think it's been the most incredible, fun, exciting eight years. Um, And I'm so grateful. At this point, it's on to new things, new ventures, um, and there's more information to come on that. Um, But there's certainly very exciting things in the pipeline. And it was just time, you know? And, And sometimes in life, you have to realize when that time is. And we could have kept going, 
Um, but at some time you have to realize it's time to move on. And it just felt like it was that time. And I wish the show nothing but phenomenal success for the future. I think that show has paved the way for all the other real estate shows to come. Uh, they're the OGs, no question about it. Um, but eight years, a hundred episodes, I'm very happy. And I wanted to leave on a high note as did Dave. And I think we did exactly that. And as I said, there's some really exciting things in the pipe and more information to come. But uh, we're, we're grateful and, and also happy to have moved on. Are you friends with all those uh, people on the show still? I'd I know say there's friends like kind with of... some, acquaintances okay. with others. and Who are the acquaintances? So <laughs> uh, who, do you, who, do you, who do you hate the most? Uh, I don't hate yeah, please. I, I think that's pretty obviously known. Um, <laughs> but but I, I don't hate anyone. Everyone is yeah. cool. Okay. Do you coalesce with them ever? Yeah, like, absolutely. Will you, you coalesce with the Altmans? Will you coalesce with Tracy? And I'll coalesce with group? anyone, dude, okay. <laughs> because I would never cut my nose despite my face. We've coalesced with the Altmans. We've coalesced with uh, Tracy and Flag. We've been mm -hmm. in deals with Frederick. In fact, I'm coalescing something with Frederick right now for $35, $40 million. Uh, we've closed numerous deals with all the cast over the years, and they're all exceptional agents and uh, have nothing but respect for all of them. Amazing. What was your, uh, why did you come to the agency? I know why I came. I love the agency. I, I talk about the agency almost every episode We're on this podcast. Hat. I'm just so proud to be a part of it. It's a uh, what was, company. yeah. What, why, like, how did you get in contact with Mauricio or whoever kind of got great you into the question? Company? And, and I definitely echo your sentiment. The agency is an incredible, incredible company. Uh, I'll tell you exactly why we joined the agency. So this is going back 10 years. We're really going for the high end. And I'll never forget it. We were up for a listing in Homeby Hills on a street called Fairing for $48 million. And I think Matt said, you know, how did you do this with no track record? And Dave and I were up for this massive listing. And we know we, we knew we were like top three agents. And David and I hired this videographer. We didn't have a single deal under our belt at this point. And David and I, we, God, I'd love to watch the video again. We <laughs> produced this whole video that was our listing presentation. And we went to the site and we took b-roll in our office and we did marketing that was international and we realized that the other agents that were going up in this pitch had decks that were like this of deals that they'd closed and david and i had that much and so the, our, our listing presentation was a video of these two idiots being david and <laughs> i um and that was our pitch well anyhow we kept losing listings to mauricio and in the end the this club. listing ended up being Mauricio, mine and David's first big listing that we co-listed together. And what Dave and I realized at that point is instead of going up against Mauricio, because we knew we wanted to smash this high end market, let's join forces with Mauricio. And that's exactly what we did. And we've probably done six, seven hundred million dollars in real estate transactions with Mauricio over the last 10 years. Um, and beyond that, it's just a phenomenal company, a great philosophy behind it. Um, but we thought, let's join him rather than go against him. And we did that 10 years ago. And we did get that listing and we did sell that listing and we represented both sides of that listing. So it definitely was a, a well thought out decision for sure. I love that. Yeah. Can't beat them, join them. Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> Matt, you've been kicking it with him this week, huh? Yeah, he's uh, his first time I really got to hang with him. He's, he's I mean, everyone, when I joined, I mean, my the videos I create are very uh, um, kind of out there and different and just welcomed with open arms from across the board. And it really is, like, I can't talk enough about the, like, every brokerage talks about culture, but there's true culture. Absolutely. Like, yeah, it's it's amazing. No, there um, really is. And he's just a one of a kind character. I think he's the only person I know that probably has more ADD than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can't sit still. He really can't sit still. Yeah. But we're very similar. But he has a great energy and a true love for the company. Um, and it could, couldn't agree with you more. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal brokerage. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to get into some of the new stuff you have going on, you're mentioning you have a lot of big things coming, but one of the big things that has launched recently is the blueprint. Yes. Um, which has been amazing. I'm subscribed. Everyone's subscribed. Um, we're we're going to drop a link here so everyone can subscribe because there's so much valuable information 
and what you're doing on the blueprint. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Thank you, man. Yeah, the blueprint was just a, a real passion project for David and I, you know, being that we started in the business with nothing from nothing, we wanted to curate a newsletter that would provide a wealth of information for agents out there around the world, really, about US markets, real estate. But beyond that, we wanted to create something where you could wake up on a Tuesday and a Friday, read something for two minutes and feel empowered for your day right? As an agent, you've got to have information, you've got to have knowledge at your fingertips. And for us, it was all about being able to provide that and give it back to the agents. And so our newsletter really is targeted to someone that wants to wake up, read something for two, three, four, five minutes, and then go about their day and feel like they're empowered. They learn something. They, they're able to provide information back to their clients. So it's really us sharing our tools, our tips, our secrets about what we do, how we did it, and giving it back to the agent community. Um, it's a free newsletter. We're not charging people. So you know, there's no hook here to spend money. It's about us getting to the larger agent community, giving back, providing that knowledge and information. And we send our newsletter out Tuesday and Friday. And it really is a passion project because for us, it was like if we had that back then, I think, you know, it would have been really helpful. And so now we're, we're able to provide that back to the, the agent community. And I'm subscribed as well. These newsletters deliver the information in a very consumable, bite-sized fashion where you guys provide your commentary. And it's yep. really easy for the average agent to read. And I love that because I'm subscribed to so many newsletters that just send trash and just send promotions and long articles and stuff. And you guys do a great job at that. It's kind of like a, a morning brew ish right. of real estate. And there yeah. really isn't another newsletter like this that I've seen at least. No. Look, we're, we know we're not economists, right? We're not trying to confuse your brain at 7 a.m. with some bullshit that you're not going to understand or read. We're really talking uh, from us to you about what we think is knowledgeable, helpful, and useful information. And I will tell you, I am beyond pleased with how it's going. The feedback that we've been getting is just like you said, I mean, is is actually unbelievable. And the exact reason that we did this and wor are working on this project, I'm getting back everything I expected, which is just phenomenal reviews, feedback, and we're going to keep going and keep building it. And I'm really, really excited about it. You can tell, I mean, you really can tell that you're so passionate about it when you do read it. Because um, like Eric said, there's a ton of these out there and for you to stand out, because I... I can't stand this kind of shit. Like Me I, too, to be you honest. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I can't. If and I can read something for longer than two minutes, it's well done, right? Yeah, I exactly. seriously have about the same focus as my, uh, about as a two-year-old. So yes, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. And if I can read through two minutes of something, it's like, yes, mission yeah. accomplished. And that's the feedback we can get been getting. Yeah. People are reading it. It's short, precise, to the point, super good information. And listen, again, there's a lot happening in the market right now. Low inventory, low interest rates, but they're rising. How do you navigate through that market? How do you navigate a buyer? How do you navigate a seller? How do we do it? Maybe what we give you isn't exactly the way you want to do it. Put your own spin on it. But I promise you one thing, you'll find it useful information. Yeah. It really helps give agents talking points to their clients. For sure. Which is a, a perfect way to deliver information to people the because object. they're not just yep. consuming it for themselves, but they're like, oh, I read this in the blueprint. I'm going to say this almost verbatim or yep. with their spin on it. So yep. is, is there like, going to be like a phase two, phase three of this type of thing that does it evolve into a course? Does it evolve into an academy or something like that? What are the next steps? It's a great question. I think these type of businesses always evolve. Um, for right now, the main focus is delivering knowledgeable and great information twice a week. And if it organically evolves into something like that, mastermind classes or courses, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. Right now, it's organically growing, not trying to rush it. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing. We have thousands and thousands of readers and everyone's giving us great feedback and you just never know where these things might go. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I really do recommend, and I, you know, I don't recommend things if I don't actually read them. So I really do recommend, <laughs> recommend you, everyone check it out. Yeah. I appreciate it, James. I really uh, love this episode and I think a big takeaway for me and I think for a lot of people will be, you kind of got out of your own way early on and you left your ego at the door 
Um, I think a lot of agents get in their own way and they can't get past their ego. Like a lot of people wouldn't team up with Mauricio or Santi because they want to do everything themselves. And to hear someone who's been as successful as you do something like that, I think that's extremely valuable to a lot of agents. So thanks so much for sharing all that. Thank you, man. I think in this business, you really cannot have any ego. We're in a service industry. We service people. We, um, we cannot let our ego get ahead of us, no matter where we are in our life, our career. And the second your ego gets ahead of you, in my opinion, that's the end of you. You know, you can believe in yourself. You can have confidence. You can have that chip on your shoulder knowing that you're doing well. But guess what? There's always someone else doing better and there's always somewhere for you to grow. Um, so never let ego stand in the way of that. I like the takeaway there, Matt. We should do that at the end of every episode. That was yes. good, Matt. That a was, solid that takeaway. Was that was great. And solid. also... So there is a link in our description to sign up for the blueprint and we are going to give away a zoom spot with James. So sign up now. We're going to be picking a winner. Uh, I, th I think a week after this episode is released, we will announce and then you will get a zoom sesh with James and he will drop all of the knowledge he knows about real estate to you. So make Absolutely. sure you subscribe now. Yes. Looking Thanks so much for it. being on James. Thank you boys. Look forward to seeing you again and congrats on all of your success. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The Broke Agent presents Over Ask Podcast.